recording started welcome back so with this we will move on to the sixth chapter the gifts of the holy spirit What is the gift of the Holy Spirit? Why do we have this gift of the Holy Spirit? How does it help us? Anyone in the class? You well, can unmute and speak. I believe the gift of the Holy Spirit is for the edification of the body of Christ. Yes, exactly. Gifts of the Holy Spirit is for the edification of the body of Christ. To help each other. To receive the guidance from God personally and also to the congregation, to the church, the body of Christ. So that God's plan and His purpose will be fulfilled in and through us. God leads us as He was with the Israelites and as how He, you know, He led us with a tangible presence, with a cloud of, a pillar of cloud in the day and a pillar of fire in the night. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is within us now and He abides in us and He is leading us and He strengthens us. And he has given us this gift of gifts of the Holy Spirit to, you know, to for the edification of the church and to each of us to be strengthened. So we see uh, the first is the personal use of the tongues and the interpretation of the tongues. Can one of us please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 2. For he who speaks in a tongue, does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks ministry, mysteries. So speaking in tongues is very important. As I said, all the other gifts will be activated automatically by the Holy Spirit. But then only the gift of tongue needs to be desired, yearned, and been asked for. Then this gift of the tongue will be activated within us. It's not that we do not have. This gift is already there with us. It is inside us. But then in time, it will be activated. We need to yearn. We need to ask. And this gift is very precious. If this gift is activated, all the other gifts will be activated automatically. Through the gift of tongues, you know, it is like we entering into the supernatural realm of God. We see in the New Testament church, everyone pray in tongues. They prayed in tongues. So, you know, many things can happen when we pray in tongues. There's edification within us. There's cleansing. You know, there's uh, cleaning, repairing, edifying, teaching us new things, revealing the mysteries of God, the secrets of God has been revealed to us. And we speak the divine mysteries of God. It's, it, it also builds us strong in the spiritual person. It changes the circumstance. When a person prays in tongues, the whole circumstance in his home, in his workplace, wherever this person is, changes. 
it opens, uh, it prepares a pathway for a miracle. And uh, when we pray in dark side, we access the mind of God. We access the mind of God and we start speaking what the Lord wants to speak in that time, in that season. It equips us, it opens a new sense for us and we become more of God conscious and being the people conscious or the world conscious. When we pray in tongues, it builds us, it stimulates our faith. It prepares us. It delivers us from the spirit of fear and it makes us more courageous and more strong. It strengthens us. And it also builds an intimate relationship with God. And it, it changes our mind. It gives us the mind of Christ. And when we pray in tongues, all the things that does not belong to God and His, and His kingdom, it uproots from us. And also when we pray in tongues, for example, when we have to make a decision and we are praying, we are seeking God's guidance to make a decision. Or if we are uh, confused, there are too many things, we don't know which one to choose. It may be in our, uh, in our studies, it can be in a career path or it can be choosing a life partner. You know, the Lord leads us clearly. He directs us. He directs us when we pray in tongues. He gives us a clear picture. There's always an inner witness speaking. The mysteries of God becomes very clear to us. We have the mind of God. And God reveals uh, what is in his mind to us, to our spirit. And we also, as we pray in tongues, yes, we may not understand always what we are praying, but God gives us the interpretation of the tongues at times. He helps us, he enables us to understand what we are praying, what God wants to say. The mysteries we speak in tongues, it's not mystery, it may be mystery to us, but not mystery to God. God reveals his secret things to us. So when we are praying in tongues in a congregation, we need to be mindful of what Paul said. If we pray in tongues and it is a mystery to the congregation, it does not edify the church. It does not benefit the church. So what we need to do is we need to interpret it. So there is a gift of interpretation as well. When one prays in tongues, either the same person can interpret what he's praying. Again, that's another gift. Interpretation is another gift. Or we have seen in the congregation when one person prays, another person, God has enabled this gift of interpretation to him. When one person prays, another person can interpret what he prays. So when he interpret, it benefits the whole congregation so that there's an understanding what the person prayed in spirit, prayed for the congregation, and here another person is, uh, you know, uh, interpreting it in the language of understanding where everyone can understand. And that benefits the whole congregation. When you're personally, when you're praying, okay, even if you have uh, not got the... Uh, um, interpretation of the tongue what you're praying but we would encourage you to go ahead and pray in tongues because praying in tongues edifies us builds us reveals the secret things of god in us also cleanses us uproots uproots every negative things from us it also paves a path for a future it builds us it strengthens our inner man they say you know um, when uh, we are tired when we are tired and when you pray, your spirit energizes. There's no more tiredness in your body. Do you know that? Even after hard work, labor, or nowadays, um, many of us are working in the IT firm and we are tired mentally. Mentally, we are tired. When we pray in tongues, 
know, the spirit of tiredness leaves us. And we have been energized within. We have been strengthened within to face the day, to handle many things again. We have been refreshed in our spirit. Maybe we should try this sometime. Or maybe some of you all have tried. You all can share your experience, what happened. We also see the uh, uh, the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of knowledge. It reveals something that is in the present and the past. Maybe we went to a church service and we are praying. The pastor is sharing the word. As he's sharing, he's moved with the spirit and we are is declaring certain things. Maybe it was relevant to each of us. And God speaks to us through the word of knowledge, convicting our inner person. And God also releases the guidance and he directs us with the word of knowledge. For some of us, it will be a reminder of the past so that we can act on what needs to be, what action needs to be taken in our future. Sometimes when we are praying in spirit, maybe in your personal life or in your career, in your ministry, there's something that is happening and you are not aware of. But when you are praying in tongues, seeking God's guidance, hear the God, you know, God who is all-knowing, he will reveal things to us, even though it was in secret, He will reveal to us through the word of knowledge. And when I say He reveals to us, it can be um, through vision, through dream, through the word, or through the instance of, you know, unknowingly the same person can just come and blurt it out. But God brings the hidden things into light to us when we seek Him. And God orchestrated, God does things aligned by His Word when we seek Him. There's a situation in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. Can one of us quickly read Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 9? Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you've entered it, you will find a called tide on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing, losing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that Amen. comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So we see here how, you know, when Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, we see how the word of knowledge came to Jesus and he instructed the two of his disciples to go into the village and he directed them what needs to be done. Untie your cult and bring, even if somebody asks, you need to answer them this way. You know, clearly, step by step. Word of knowledge that is happening in the present. 
I remember one such incident which happened in my life. Um, I was praying, as I said, I was working in a firm and I was praying, Lord, I want to join a Bible college. I want to join the ministry so that I need to equip myself. So I want to join a Bible college and I was praying. And as I was praying, I kept three points to God. One, uh, the director, the company where I worked with was under a director and he was a very good person. He was a man of God who was owning this company and I was working under him. Uh, it's been three and a half years and I know this person will not allow me to quit his company that easily because before that it's ever approached two times and he said it's your time has not yet come you need to work okay and it was not very easy for him to let go so I was praying Lord make a way if this is the right time allow my dad you know, my dad always wanted to see me as a businesswoman or a working professional. So he wanted to see me as a working woman. And, you know, I said, Lord, if it is the right time, you make my dad to say, quit your job. Second, allow my uh, boss to release me from my workplace. Third, show me which Bible college that I need to join. Three things I kept in prayer and every day I used to pray. And this was a stir within me. I could not quench it. It's been for more than three years. I was praying continuously on this. And especially these three points, maybe for last one year, I've been praying on these three. So what happened is I was invited to a church by a friend of mine. And there was a series of teaching on missions mandate. Okay, so that was the first time I've come to All People's Church. And I'm there. I heard the teaching. It was so much for me. It was like the word of knowledge, God speaking to me. There's a stir within me. And at the end of the message, uh, there was a call out. Uh, you know, uh, Lord is speaking to you and you know, we want to pray for you. Come, come forward. And I, I, I clearly sense the Holy Spirit saying, I'm calling you, you come. I was, I was holding myself. I said, no, Lord, it's a new church. I've come here for the first time. How can I go? There are other people here. You know, I held on to myself. No, but there was a clear instruction, go. So after a lot of your own mind battles, I went and Pastor Ashish was standing there. I went to him, but a lot of distance, okay? There was a lot of distance between us. He didn't even touch. I just went and stood there and said, just pray. I didn't tell him anything. And here he prays. He prays with exactly the three points that I was praying over for. He prayed saying, Lord, allow a dad to release her for your ministry. I feel so much real even now. The words that he spoke. Second, release her from her workplace. Third, director director which ministry that she needs to go in and you're very clear to the point he he just spoke these three points prayed and he sent that was a clear indication for me that he spoke my present what i was asking god for and as i came you know within two months within two months things happened my dad said quit your job you're I mean, you know, you're so much occupied with the work and you don't have time at home. You quit. And you can help me in my business. I said, okay. And within me, I said, Lord, you're answering my prayer. I was so happy. I was really happy that God, you're answering my prayer. Now, second, I went to office. I spoke to my boss, uh, like what my dad said. And this time, he was very different. He said, if your dad is said, then I have no say towards it. Give me some time. Give me a day or two. I'll get back to you. And after two days, he said, uh, if your dad has said that and you, uh, you have to support him, so I will release you in one month's time. So he took one month's time. And again, he checked with me, how, did I change my mind? Because he has not recruited anyone else to you know, replace me, thinking that I may continue to serve there. I said, no, so I need to quit. You know, he released me. And the third, I was searching for which college.
and God directed me to APC. I, I didn't even know because I was very new to this place, new to the church. Again, I went and met Pastor. You know, he was very busy with uh, God TV. And, you know, I was just running behind him. Wherever Pastor went, I went behind him. I still remember. And uh, I said, Pastor, I want to talk to you. Can you please rec recommend me to a college? And Pastor said, we have a college. Would you like to join? I said, yes, I would love to. And that's how my journey started with APC. Lord directs. But before that, I'll tell you, when I was praying that night, even before I could approach Pastor Ashish with regards to the college, when I was praying in my prayer time, Lord spoke to me as how Paul met Ananias. I want you to meet Pastor Ashish and ask him to direct you. Which college? You know, hearing the voice of God. When we pray in tongues, God speaks to us clearly. He opens the door. And this is how the door opened for me in the ministry. I didn't have any foundation where I can stand. Or I didn't have anyone who could support me. Teach me, guide me, push me. Your know, God opened a spiritual foundation where I can be equipped, I can be trained, I can, be, I can also serve. So just like me, if many of us here, in the class or would be listening to this message later. If you're praying, if you're asking God, show me the direction. Seek the Holy Spirit. Because He desires each of us to serve Him. And He has a plan and a purpose. When we pray in tongues, in Romans chapter 8, we see that the Holy Spirit groans with our spirit in the seeding, asking God. And the Lord will lead us. He will lead us in the right path, in the right direction. With this, we will move on to the word of wisdom. So word of wisdom is also a gift of the Holy Spirit. It reveals the mind of God. His will and His purpose, which helps us, you know, in decision making or uh, the course of action that we need to take. God leads us. God will guide us. For instance, when we are praying in tongues and God gives us a word of wisdom, way to go, what to talk. Sometimes when we have to go for a meeting and, you know, you don't know what decision, what to discuss. You know, God says He puts His word in our mouth. And he directs us. His leading will be so tangible. You know, it. this wisdom is from God. We see many instances in the Bible. How, uh, you know, uh, God revealed this wisdom. It is a supernatural gift of God that only the Holy Spirit can impart in and through us. It's not as same as the wisdom of this world. Paul says in the scripture that, you know, uh, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is not of the world, but it is of God. We see how God's wisdom is not the same as of the world. Never late. Whenever we pray, it can be start uh, of a church, of a ministry, of business. When we ask God, He will reveal, He, he, he reveals His wisdom. Many instances in the book of Acts also we see God's wisdom. When Peter and, uh, and, uh, and John had to speak to the rulers and teachers in the Jerusalem, we see how, uh, you know, uh, God spoke in and through them. They had the kind of boldness to talk to people. Can one of us turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 13? Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And read, please. Acts 
Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they realized that they were uneducated and ordinary fishermen. And from where did this boldness come? Where does this revelation come? This wisdom come? It amazed the people. Also, we see in the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 10, they could not stand the wisdom of spirit, which was in Stephen. He, when Stephen confronted the religious leaders, they could not withstand. They were very upset with him. In fact, they stoned him. The word of wisdom can also be given to those, uh, you know, to defend the faith among the unbelievers. God can put the right words and reveal it to them. They will be marveled. Through this gift, many problems can be solved. And we can take the right action. You know, we need to ask God, ask God, God, activate this gift within us, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, and discerning of the spirit. Discerning of the spirit is we need to discern every spirit, every gift, every prophecy which has been given. It is in the spiritual realm. When we discern, God speaks to us. Is it from God? Or is it from self? Or is it from the enemy? Through this gift, you know, God guides us and helps us. Uh, to. He directs us and he also protects us in decision making, uh, you know, uh, in choosing which career, choosing a life partner. We need to discern, starting a ministry, which place, When we see God and when we listen, God guides us. He helps us to make choice. He helps us to foresee things. And he gives us the peace, the inner peace, when the decision is right. So how do we discern the Spirit? One instance that has been recorded in the notes is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 23. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23, we see here uh, you know, when Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and need to be killed and raised on the third day, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. You see, with well-being, he said to Jesus, but then Jesus knew this is not from the human nature. It is from the enemy. And he rebuked that Satan. And he said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but things of men. It has nothing to do with Peter personally, but the very word that he said. And also when Jesus had to wash the uh, feet of his disciples, Jesus was very clearly aware that who will betray him. That's what in John chapter 13, we see that when Jesus was washing the uh, feet of all the disciples, when it came to the disciple, um, I mean, Judas' feet, he washed. The scripture says that, you know, Jesus said that, he who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. And after partaking of the bread, Jesus looks at him and said, what you do, do quickly. And he walks out. So everything was orchestrated by God and Jesus knew it. And he was preparing himself. 
in prayer. So in this way, all the situation in our life, it may be any kind of decision making or any part of your life. It can be in your ministry, in your career, in your studies, in your personal life. We need to discern, we need to ask God. For some time, it may be instantly God reveals to us. Sometimes it takes time, but then tell you, God gives you the clarity. Go ahead and keep praying and asking God, God direct me, speak to me. So God can speak to you, make things clear through his word, through his spirit. When we say through his spirit, it can be again through the inner voice, audible voice, dreams, visions. We will be uh, studying that in the next chapter, how God speaks to us. But this is how. Or even if we are uh, stepping into a, 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 even when we step into a wrong path, you know, the Holy Spirit is so strong in us, who leads us, He warns us, He alerts us. And He says, this is not the right path that you're stepping into. Many times there's an inner voice, there won't be uh, a peace within you to do something. And then when you sit and discern and ask God to guide you, he speaks to us. He can speak to us through word or through diff different instances that happened in the past. No, but God relates to us. And, uh, you know, one thing we need to remember, God always speaks to us in the way we can understand. It's not the way like, okay, the other person, he spoke to them in dream. So God speak to me in dream only. No. God can speak to us in different ways. He knows how we will understand, how we will respond. Holy Spirit understands us better than anyone else. So He will speak to us in the way that we can understand. Even the language that He communicates to each of us may be different. May be different according to each of us according to our relationship that we have with him. He communicates to us. He alerts us. He prepares us a time ahead. When we seek his guidance for, you know, in planning our life, our career, five years ahead or 10 years ahead. A God is a God who knows the end from the beginning. So he can direct us. He can speak to us and he leads us. So all we have to do is seek His guidance in our life. Seek Him more. When we have this relationship with Him, seeking God in every area of our life, maybe the smallest thing, which, may be, which we may think it's simple, but God is really interested to know even that smallest thing. So today, Let's seek God. Let's seek Him. And ask God, you guide me in all the area of my life. Before we could go into a time of prayer, is there anyone else who would like to share uh, some instances how the Holy Spirit ministered to the word of knowledge, word of wisdom? Please go ahead and share or the discerning of the Spirit. Anyone from a class? Uh, Ma'am, can I share one? Um, I still remember the instance. Uh, it was a few years ago, like uh, it was Sunday morning. It was a busy Zelly, morning. you want to like share all... something? We can't hear you. Can you hear me? No, you're not audible. Hello? Uh, we can hear sexually. Okay. That's true. Yeah. You can speak now. Okay. Can I share now? Yes, yes. I think 
Um, it was a few years ago. Uh, it was a. It was on Sunday morning. I was busy getting ready, and you know, like I was living in another town in Jamalpur, and my parents they were living in Kohima, my hometown. So it's been a while. Uh, like I was busy in the ministry, and I was not able to get back to my mom. And like uh, she just called me that morning and just inquiring about my well-being. And as I was talking to her, you know, like I just felt the impression in my heart. Something is wrong with her back. So I just asked, Mom, is there anything troubling you? Like uh, your back, like is there a back pain? And I just asked her, and, oh, yeah. Like it's been a while I'm having back pain. And it's just troubling me. So it was over the phone. But I said, Mom, like, can I pray for you, you know, over the phone? Because in the spirit, there's no dimension. The Holy Spirit can move anywhere, any place. So, like, um, my mom, like, uh, the way she grew up, you know, she's from, like, I also from a Baptist background. So, like, uh, usually we don't experience this kind of thing. And she was like, her reaction was like, kind of shock. What over the phone? But it's okay, mom, I'll pray for you. So I just instructed her, you put your phone on the loudspeaker and just uh, touch your, you know, back, you know, like with your right hand. I'm going to pray right now. Just believe that God will heal you. So my, I, I instructed her and, you know, are you ready? I just asked her and I was just pray for her, you know, like I just commanded in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of, you know, infirmities, the pain to leave her and not to come back again. I just said that, and I declare that she's healed by the stripes of Jesus, and I just asked mom, okay, you know, like, just check your back. And she, she was like, shock. I mean, like, I feel so comfortable. I feel the pain is gone. And after that, you know, okay, just believe God healed you, okay? And I went about my day and in it was I think Monday morning she called me up and she was like so excited. Hey, you know like after you prayed for me the big pain is gone and I'm feeling much better and as uh, we rejoice and we give thanks to God and you know like few months passed by and I just asked her, you know, I called her and asked her, How is it how are you doing? And she said that from the day you prayed for me, you know, I don't have any symptom of pain in my back. I'm healed, and I'm, I praise God, and we thank God for that. Yeah, that's the thing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Okay, before we could go into a time of prayer, there's one question from Isaac, Isaac Mangi, like, um, which book are we using right now? Okay, uh, <clears throat> this course, Minister's Foundation, have three books. First is Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Second is Receiving God's Guidance. And the third book is Code of Honor. So the first two months, that is the month of August, and uh, August and September, we will be uh, covering on the first two books, that is Fulfilling God's Purpose and Receiving God's Guidance. Receiving, uh, Fulfilling God's Purpose was covered in the first class itself. We covered all the three chapters and the next three chapters we left for the personal study. And after the first class, from the uh, second or the third session, third lecture, <clears throat> We started with uh, receiving God's guidance. So every week we are covering two chapters. So that will go up till September last week. From October and November, we will be starting on the Code of Honor, on the book Code of Honor. Uh, is that okay, Isaac? Did that clear your doubt? Isaac is not here. Okay. Is he there? No. Okay. 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 Can one of us lead us in prayer before we could close the session? Uh, I'm, 
I'm praying. Yes, please. Our gracious and merciful Lord, we want to thank you this morning. We want to bless you for the privilege and the opportunity that you have granted us to share fellowship and to study your word. That we want to thank you for the life of our pastor and want to thank you for the life of every person in this class. Lord, we thank you for the leadings and the manifestation of the gifts that you have taught us this morning. We continue to pray that, Lord, if any of us lack or if any of us doesn't have grace in any of these gifts, we pray that, Lord, you grant us the grace in the name of Jesus. Father, as we step out, we pray that cause us to manifest the giftings of the Holy Spirit in our ministries and in our workplaces so that your presence will manifest in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that, Lord, you continue to lead and guide us by the inner witnesses of your Spirit, by the audible voice, that you continue to direct our path, that we will make yes. right choices in our lives. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name, we pray, commit ourselves and the, and the rest of our classes left into your hands. Continue to grant us the strength and the grace to go through in the name of Jesus. Continue to bless us and see us through this course successfully. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you all. See you all next week. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.